Now number 17, the graph of a function f is shown above. If the limit as x approaches b, f of x exists, and f is not continuous at b, then b equals what? Okay, so this is telling us that if the limit exists, then the limit from the left is going to equal the limit from the right. Okay, if it is also telling us that f is not continuous, that means there's going to be a hole or a jump or an asymptote or something like that. So we're looking for, we want the limit to exist, so the limit from the left will equal the limit to the, from the right, but there will be a hole, a jump, or an asymptote. <clears throat> so if we look at negative one, if I'm looking at negative one, I'm seeing the graph is not continuous because there is a hole, a jump, or an asymptote, but the limit from the left is equal to negative infinity, and the limit from right is equal to infinity, so the limit does not exist. So since both of those conditions are not met, that's not a good choice. Okay, for z for the second one, the limit from the left is equal to two. The right for, the limit from the right equals two. The limit from the left equals two. So the limit does exist. However, the graph is not continuous. Um, oh, the limit. Just a second. The limit does exist, and there is a hole, a jumper, and asymptote. So B is my right choice. Um, if I looked at that one, um, if I just want to do the other ones, if I looked at C, notice the limit exists, but it is continuous. Number two, the limit does not exist. And then at three, the limit exists and it's continuous. So I wanted it to exist and not be continuous, which was choice B. All right, 18. Let f be a function such that the second derivative is less than zero, so the second derivative is negative, for all x in the closed interval one to two. Selected values of f are shown in the table above. Which of the following must be true about f prime of 1.2? Okay, we did a problem similar to this on the um, 2008 multiple choice. And let's just go through this one real quickly here. All right, so we're gonna have um, 4.18. 4.38, 4.56, and 4.73. Okay, we're concerned about the derivative at 1.2, so I'm really wanting to know what's going on around here. So I'm gonna find this, the derivative, and to find the derivative of that, we're just gonna be looking at the slopes between those two points. So I'm gonna do 4.38 minus 4.18 over 1.2 minus 1.1. And if I do that, I am going to get an answer of two. Okay, and then if I do the same thing on the other side of 1.2, I'm gonna get 4.56 minus 4.38, um, and I will get 1.3 minus 1.2, and when I do that, I get 1.8. All right, so that those are the first derivatives, so I, I know that my actual derivative is going to need, be need to be between those two values. So, um, and if I'm looking at that, I notice that my derivative is going to have to be somewhere in between the 1.8 and the 2. All right, problem 19. Two particles start at the origin and move along the x-axis. For time 0 to 10, their respective position functions are given by x sub 1 is sine t and x sub 2 is equal to e to the negative t minus 1. For how many values of t do the particles have the same velocity? So if the same velocity they, they have equal velocities, so let's go ahead and find the velocity of them. The velocity of particle one would be the derivative of the position. The derivative of sine of t would be cosine t. And then the particle two's velocity would be the derivative of its position. The derivative of e to the negative two t will be negative two e to the negative two t. The derivative of one is just zero. So I found their velocities. If they have the same velocity, then the velocities will equal each other. Okay, and we don't really care what values, we just wanna know how many from zero to 10. So this is a calculated problem. So I just decided I'm going to graph them and look at how many times they intersect. So if I graph the cosine from zero to 10 and change your window, so that's what happens. That's what the cosine function looks like from zero to 10. And then from um, zero to 10, the other one is going to look something like this, I believe. And so if I'm looking at how many times do they have the same velocity? One, two, three. Three times, which is option D.
Right, problem 20. The graph of the function f, shown above, consists of two line segments. If g is the function defined by g of x is equal to the integral from 0 to x of f of t, then g of negative 1 equals. Um, if I'm given g is equal to an integral, I know that I'm going to be looking for the area under the curve. And we're just simply going to plug negative 1 in for my x. So I'm going to go from 0 to negative 1 of f. I'm not allowed to go from 0 to negative 1, so it's going to be the opposite of when I go from negative 1 to 0. And this is just the area under the curve from negative 1 to 0. I notice that that's a, a triangle, excuse me, so it's going to be 1 half. The base of that triangle is 1. The height of that triangle is 2. So that will give me an answer of negative 1, which is choice B. Number 21, the graphs of the five functions are shown below. Which function has a non-zero average value over the closed interval negative pi to pi? All right, average value is 1 over b minus a times, times the integral from negative pi to pi of the function. Okay, so I'm going to get 1 over 2 pi negative pi to pi of the function. And if I'm giving the, a picture, I know that an integral is the area under the curve. Okay, for this to give me a non-zero average value, um, I know that the area under my curve must be non-zero. So we're just gonna see which one of these doesn't give me zero when I go from negative pi to pi. Okay, on this one, negative pi to pi would be these two areas. Notice that this one's negative, this one's positive, they're going to cancel each other out, so that is a zero area. Um, this one going from negative pi over pi, again, positive, negative, but they're the same thing. They're gonna cancel each other out and give me zero. Um, this one, if I go from negative pi to pi, I'm going to get that, and I notice that if I put these two together, they're just the opposite of the other one, so again, that's going to give me zero. This one from negative pi to pi, again, these two are going to cancel each other out. These two are going to cancel each other out, so I get zero. Down to the last one. I hope this one works. This, 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 this. Notice nothing will cancel each other out. I think I'll get more of a negative answer than a positive, but I will get an answer that is non-zero, so it will be option E. 22. A differentiable function f has the property that f of 5 equals 3 and f prime of 4, 5 equals 4. What is the estimate for f of 4.8 using the local linear approximation for f at x equals 5? Okay, this is worded a little bit differently than we're used to, but I see something about a line. So local linear approximation is simply the tangent line. So tangent line, line, linear, line. y equals mx plus b. Um, m is the slope or the derivative. They nicely told me that the derivative was 4. They also told me that the y value was 3, and I know that the x value is 5. So solving this, I'll get 3 equals 20 plus b. I'll get b equals negative 17, so I have y equals 4x minus 17. They said to use that to evaluate f of 4.8, so we're simply just going to now plug in 4.8 for the x. So. Um, we get to use our calculator, but um, I'm just not going to because I don't have my calculator handy out in front of me. That's going to give me 19.2. So 19.2 minus 17 gives me 2.2. So my answer will be choice A. All right, problem number 23. Oil is leaking from the tanker at a rate of 2,000 e to the negative 0.2 gallons per hour where T is measured in hours. How much oil leaks out of the tanker from time equals T, T equals zero to T equals 10? Okay, how much oil? How much oil would be gallons? I, they gave me something that's in gallons per hour. So to go from gallons per hour to gallons, I know that I'm going to take the integral. It will go from zero to 10, and it's just gonna be of the rate. And if I wanted to rewrite this, it will go from zero to 10. 2,000 e to the negative 0.2 t, and then from here, we're going to let math 9 be our friend because this is a calculator problem, and if I do that, that will equal 8,647 gallons, which is choice D. All right, 24. If f prime is equal to sine of pi e to the x over 2 and f of 0 equals 1, then f of 2 equals. So they are asking me for f. I'm given f prime. So I know to get from f 
to f prime to f, I need to take the integral of f prime. Um, because this looks like something I'm not going to be able to use, do by hand or want to do by hand, um, I know I need to know two x values. So x at 0 and x at 2. So 0 to 2. Okay, when I do that, the integral of f prime will just be f. I'm going to have to evaluate it at my endpoints. All right, they told me that f of, two, of, one, of 0 was equal to 1. I can find this because this is just going to be the integral from 0 to 2. f prime was sine of pi e to the x over 2. So I can use math 9 to get this answer. And if I use math 9 to get that answer, that would equal 0 0.157. And now I have f of 2 minus 1. To solve for f of 2, I will just simply add 1. So I'll get f of 2 equals 1.157, which is option E. And we are all done.